familiar with. Eric Rill on your left, Chris Van Meter on your right. Both of these guys have won open series. Rill, multiples. Uh, he also won a PTQ last weekend in Columbus, so he'll be going to a Pro Tour Journey of Knicks. But right now, know. right now he's got to get by the number six player on our leaderboard, Chris Van Meter, who very badly wants to qualify for the Players' Championship. And he's off to a nice start so far this weekend, sitting at 4-1 and one with his Greener Monsters deck. Yeah, and, and Eric is playing. You know, we talked about this deck being kind of the hype a couple weeks ago and falling off the radar, but Eric doing very well here. Blue-white control, no creatures in the main deck. Win conditions are Jace, Elspeth, and an Elixir. Yep. You've seen this recipe before. Well, update you guys on the board state here. You see Rill's got a couple of lands in play. Among them is a Mutavolt. You'll also see a Temple of Deceit there, but... That is just so that he can scry, so no black cards in his deck. He's got an Elspeth on five, three soldier tokens, so predictably Elspeth just did come into play last turn. Van Meter attacking with a 3-3 three, three Miscutter Hydra, has a Domri that is ticking up, trying to get to that ultimate, and a couple of other cards in his hand. I think among them, I think there's a Rook Thar hiding out in the grip. It's a yep. one of in Van Meter's sideboard uh, against the old all spell deck. Huh? Now, Elspeth can't kill it. <laughs> they can't kill yep. it with the minus ability. It's probably going to be priced into doing that, but... Pretty good cards. You see Gorklan Rampager. Elspeth going to go down to one. I think it's uh, probably safe to cast that uh, Rurikthar now. Well, well next turn. Next yeah. turn. Excuse me. Here's an Zorius Charm. Can't target the Miscutter Hydro with that. Now, part of the reason, as we uh, spoke with CVM a little bit earlier during one of our breaks, is, you know, he thinks that part of the reason his deck is so good is just because people have really just kind of forgotten about how good Gorkland Rampager is. Yes. And I think I agree with him. It, it's been gone for so long. Yeah, it's another, you know, Ravnica, powerful Ravnica block card that you can't play all of them, so yep. some of them had to fall by the wayside from time to time. Here's the Supreme Verdict trading one for one with the Miscutter Hydra, but that will allow Real to put some Soldier Tokens into play, so not a bad trade. Here's a detention sphere to take care of Domri, also not bad. And looks like there's a concession from Chris yeah, here. Yeah, looks like there is a concession now. Maybe trying to be a little time conscious? A little bit surprised. I think I missed something with that. Well, regardless, yeah. it appears that we're going on to a third Yeah, I mean, it looks like a little confusing. I get, we'll get an update here from our table spotter. Yeah, they are going to be moving on to game number three here. I mean, life totals may or may not have been correct. Either way, uh, Van Meter does concede the game. So let's take a look at sideboards. Mm -hmm. We've got one Rurik Thar, four Miscutter Hydra, two Destructive Reverie, two Shock, two Plummet, two Mizium Mortars, and two Chandra Pyromasters. As we do have confirmation that Chris did did just concede the game. Um, we've got Rurik Thar obviously going to come in. Miscutter Hydras we love in this matchup. Destructive Reverie going to take care of Detention Sphere. Uh, Shock, Plummet, Mizium Mortars, not so much. Chandra, I like a lot here. Chandra is, uh, it, it's tough because in my experience playing with Chandra against blue-white decks, it's, uh, they have a lot of really clean answers to it, and unless you're actually going to be threatening them with the ultimate, it's not the, the most efficient thing to be doing. Sure. It still may be better than other options he has available to him. He obviously has to cut some of his removal. Maybe he doesn't want to have four copies of blue because they're not their best here, mm -hmm. but... Uh, Chandra, in my experience, has not been as good as you would anticipate a Planeswalker being against blue-white decks. Okay. I'd much rather be on Xenagos or Domri. Well, thankfully for Chris, he has uh, three Xenagos and four copies of Domri. So he's got plenty of good Planeswalkers to have here. And on the Eric side, he has uh, to sideboard in. He has a uh, Pithy Needle he can bring it in to fight over Planeswalkers. And uh, an Aetherling is potentially good here. Two copies of Celestial Feller, uh, good answer to some, to Miscutter Hydra, uh, particularly, and just attackers in general. So he can clean up his deck around the margins a little bit, but he doesn't have any enormously impactful cards to be bringing in. So Van is going to be on the play for this third and final game between two open series champions. Green and Monsters on the right, Blue White Control on the left. And as these players do shuffle up, we of course want to thank you guys for joining Patrick and I. On our first tournament of many this year. We have a lot, a lot in front of us. We have a, a, a few on the docket. It's kind of crazy thinking back now that 20, uh, 2013 is over. I still remember the first tournament that we did that year uh, in San Diego. It yep. does not seem so long ago. No. It's crazy to think that it was a year ago, finishing up with the Invitational Las Vegas just a couple weeks ago. Uh, it goes by fast when you're flying and covering a tournament uh, two, maybe three times a month. But it is definitely a lot of fun. Uh, of course, we want you guys to join in with us as we do make our travels. On Twitter is the best way at SCG Live, hashtag SCG Indy. Um, we're in round six of 11 here in Indianapolis, and 
712 players. It's great to see this many people in a room loving magic. Yeah, particularly, you know, given the weather is, there's some risk here of a snowstorm coming. Some would say it's frightful. It's generally freezing out, but still, really good turnout. And some would say that magic is delightful. Magic is delightful. Okay. NFL playoffs kicked this weekend. A lot of excuses Boo. people could have just stayed at home. But I watch football when you can play magic. That's what I say. Right. It's easy. You know what I love right now? What's better? What's, as real is going to take a mulligan. What's better, Chris's beard or Eric's sweater? Chris's beard. That was very. That, that was seemed almost too easy for you to answer. Anyone? I mean, I could go on to whatever Amazon with twenty bucks or whatever and get Eric's shirt right now. I was feeling so inclined. Chris is. You probably get two for twenty. Yeah, probably two yeah, for yeah, twenty okay. if I had to guess. Okay. Some sort of President's Day sale. Yeah. <laughs> Chris's beard, that's a labor of love. That takes time. Not everyone can do that. Definitely more impressive. Okay. All right. I'm a fan of real sweater. I That much facial hair, it, it itchy, scratchy. But that sweater, you're really making a statement with that sweater. That's a sweater that just says, I don't care what you think. <laughs> that's what that says to yeah. me. <laughs> it's a, that's a sweater that says, you know, man, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> I like it. It's a fashion whatever. statement. You take your suits and your ties right. and you throw them in the garbage because my sweater will eat that. We're all going to take a look at his top six. It's the beard versus sweater matchup. That's, that's the decks right now. Eric Real sweater, Chris Van Meter beard. Loser leaves town match. Eric might be missing mana and total mana and blue mana in this hand that he's just picked up. That's not good. But five is very few cards, so. Also true. Also true. What to do. He does not look thrilled about taking a mulligan here. Eric still mulling this one over. Van Meter kept his. Uh, very kept his rarely do I quick. see someone with the hands like that where they end up keeping the hand. Yeah, same. Yeah, same. Because what, what I feel like you're doing there, um, and I've always felt this way, when you're looking at a hand that long, I think I feel like you're convincing yourself to keep a bad hand. Yeah. Because like you know, you know that you should mulligan. Like if you were just to like be sitting in your room or something, and like you know you're just gold fishing a deck, and you just were to turn over the tops of cards in your deck and see like a hand like that, you'd be like, eh, mulligan, obviously. What am I doing? You know, and then shuffle back up and then deal out some more hands of your deck. But like you know, when you're in a situation where it's like, ah, I might be mulligan a five against a really good player in Van Meter. I'm four and one. If I lose again, I can't make the top eight. Ugh. You know, you might convince yourself to keep what is otherwise a pretty marginal to bad hand. I think the camera has a way of keeping people honest in those situations. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's I think right. if it's possible if he was at home playing Magic Online, he would have kept that six-card hand. But oh, here, easy. Easy keep Magic Online. You can just join another queue. Right. Yeah, that's easy. I've, and I've always felt that way. Like, I, I feel like mulliganing, for the most part, is a pretty easy decision. Like, I, I honestly feel like when you're sitting in your hand and you're looking at it, you're just like, you're calculating, oh, I could draw this and that and this and that, and then my hand ends up perfect. It's like, chances are you're probably just supposed to mulligan. Yes. Van Reader is going to start the show with an Elvish Mystic. His real is happy enough with his five-card hand. He's going to play an island and pass the turn back. So Van Reader will take a draw here with a little bit of acceleration. See if he has maybe a mountain and a Domri. There's your green, so no red. There's a Boon Seder in the main phase, so it can't be countered. Pass the turn back. Yeah, and that's a, a pretty strong indicator he's uh, missing red. Yep. He could have a, a temple, I suppose, and wanted to curve out. But Mutavolt is the play here for real. Van Meter draws a Garrett Collar of the Beast. And you can see his hand right now. He's got red cards. And he does not have anything that I think he can deploy on this particular turn. Well, he has an ooze. Oh, he has an ooze? Okay. So ooze the boss is going to come into play. And Rill is going to take a draw step. So even though Rill had a mulligan three and his lands are coming up a little bit weird this game because he's got an island, I think, two mutavolts. He's got another island, but he doesn't have white mana. So Van Meter can actually get, get to work here. Another Elvish Mystic there for Chris off the top. He knows he doesn't have to worry about a Supreme Verdict. Real is so far away from doing that. No Mystic Gate in this format. Yeah, Chris, I mean, fortunately for Chris, Eric doesn't have any white mana, so there's yeah. no threat of Supreme Verdict anytime nope. in the near future. But I mean, Chris can, Chris can comfortably cast his Elvish Mystic and not have to worry about it getting swept away. You know, the worst that could happen is some, maybe something like an Attention Spear on the Elvish Mystics, but then you're still getting, you know, beat in for six points of damage from those other creatures, so. Yeah, I'm sure Chris would be totally happy with, with that play here. Yeah. I don't, I, I don't think there's much of a reason to hold back at this point. 
You know, it's gonna get you. It's gonna get you. I mean, I guess a counter spell for dissolve. A dissolve scry yes. is the big one, and that's exactly what's gonna happen. So maybe that's why he was a little hesitant in casting that one man accelerant. Rill's gonna keep the top card of his deck. He's gonna take a draw. Let's see what he finds. It's, I believe, a hollowed fountain. Uh, pretty valuable piece of the puzzle here. Can he afford to play it untapped? The answer is yes. So Rill's gonna go down to eight. Three mana. This is a D sphere. And that's going to take care of probably old Boon Sates. Yep. All right, so there that goes. Kevin is going to be able to get active here to eat that. Going to turn it into a 3 3 creature. Vanameter going to go up to 21. If you're Vanameter right now, you really want to draw a red source of mana. Yeah, I mean, Destructive Rivalry here would be incredible. Let's see what he finds. It's a Muta Vault. That's not so bad. That's not, no, still, still more pressure. Yep. An attack here for four is going to put real to force. He'll be facing lethal in just a little bit. Let's see if Rill can run off another white source maybe have Supreme Verdict here. We could have a we could have a game of it, actually. Well, also keep in mind that he has uh, Elspeth in hand, so if he's mm -hmm. able to find white mana, then Elspeth might be able to just lock it up. Last Breath, I think, is in Rill's hand. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe a Celestial Flare. But either way, Van Meter draws his card. It's a Mist Cutter Hydra. How does that change things? Uh, well, I think... It's pretty attractive just to slam it here and send it and ooze, right? You have two three threes attacking into some muta vaults. Doesn't seem so bad. Don't have to worry about last breath. Don't have to worry about celestial flare. Celestial flare can't be cast because there's only a singleton white. The creatures are out of range for last breath. Seems like a reasonable play. Obviously, Mr. Hydra can't be countered. If Eric's plan this turn is to revelate for two, you mm, beat you that. Beat that. A lot of windows are closed. Puts him in probably in the chump blocking duty with the uh, with the muta vault. Yeah. It looks like that's the call here for Van Meter. So Miss Cutter Hydra going to come into play. It's a 3-3. There's no countering that, I promise. I think we're going to see an attack here with both creatures. And Rill might be priced into now with how this is going. This is interesting. Well, this Now he might be priced into the situation where he has to just go, if Van Meter swings with both, he just has to put each Muta Vault in front of the three power guys and lose them both. Mm -hmm. Because by double blocking one of the creatures, yes, you get to save a Muta Vault, and then like, if you were to cast the Supreme Verdict, you would just die to, Muta, die to Van Meter's Muta because he's a one. Yeah, I, I'm surprised. Okay. Yeah. I was curious as to Chris's hesitation there and sending in the ooze. And so now here are the Muta Vaults going to get in front of the Scavenging Ooze. Miss Cutter Hydra is going to put Van Me or is going to put Rill, excuse me, down to one. Rill's going to lose the Muta Vault. Van Meter's going to lose the Ooze. And now the Destructive Revelry is lethal. The Muta Vault is lethal. So Chris's draw steps are going to be great here. Yeah, and and Chris also no longer has to worry about the third of Elspeth. Mm -hmm. There's a last breath to take care of that Elvish Mystic. Van Meter's going to gain some life. That doesn't really matter very much to Rill. Is Rill's going to take a draw step here. It's a detention sphere, which is not going to do anything on this particular board, as Miss Cutter Hydra is protection from blue. Rill is going to pass the turn back. Van Meter is going to draw. It's a stomping ground, and that should put the old check mark on this game. Yep. As Van Meter is going to take his time here and make sure he doesn't miss anything, which I obviously think is smart. It's not a slow roll or anything of that nature. He just wants to make sure he doesn't miss anything. So Miss Cutter Hydra is going to get blocked. Van Meter with a stomping ground. Thinks the coast is probably clear to fire off that destructive revelry. That's what he's going to do. Two damage. That's going to do it. So yeah. Chris Van Meter is going to win this match over Eric Rill. Two games to one. Green Red Monsters moves on to 5-1 and one in CVM's hand. We'll certainly find out how BBD is doing with it as well, as both of those players were 4-1 and one coming into this round. But at the end of the day, Green Red